Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Grill Nation show with Jason Grill. Thanks for joining us today. If you're listening on the radio on 980 AM KMBZ, if you are joining us on podcasts, we're on Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, of course, we're on uh, Apple, we're on everything on podcasts, and we're also up on my website, grillnationshow.com. And I appreciate all those that might be watching us on the live stream uh, on social media or on Google or excuse me, YouTube as well today. We are uh, we're excited for a great show. We've had some really good shows of late, so I know this one will uh, will also be great. And I really appreciate all the listeners for joining us each and every week. We're getting some really good feedback on the show and and the guests that we've been having on and and, and the relationships that are being built right now in Kansas City and the region through the through the Grill Nation show. So I really appreciate that. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest for today's show. Keisha Gracious is joining us from Goodwill. She's the director of retail services. The website is Mocan goodwill.org. Keisha, welcome to the show. How are you today? I am great. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you. And um, I tell you what, I've learned so much about your organization uh, just from getting to know the CEO uh, of the organization and other members of your team, uh, you know, in the last six, seven, eight months. And uh, it's amazing the work you all do. And I, and I really learned a lot from them. And so I'm excited about the show today because we're going to really break down kind of the everything you do with the donation centers and retail services and how that affects kind of the, the what you can and can't can't do based on uh, our community and helping people. So I'm excited to have you on. But before we get to the all the work you do, let's talk a little bit about your background. Tell us about kind of where you're from and, uh, and you know, what your career journey has looked like uh, up to this point. Great. Um, thank you for having me here today. I'm excited to tell you about Goodwill and all the work that we're doing. Um, so I have had a background in retail. I had 11 years of retail management experience prior to coming um, to Goodwill and working for companies like Walgreens and Home Goods and different big boxes like those. And um, also working in training and development, just staff development and getting people ready um, to move on to the next level. Um, so my time with Goodwill started in August of 2017, where I came on board as the retail training manager. Um, that entailed getting out into the store, training the processes and making sure things are going according to what is planned, you know, all the SOPs that we've built and making sure those are going well and running in sync with what we want um, as leadership of the stores. And then I transitioned two years later into a district manager role. Um, and that was overseeing six Kansas locations and then um, moving into the role of director of retail operations. It has been quite the ride and just learning every day of the impact that we have in the community. It's, it's very satisfying. Um, and I, I love and have enjoyed my time here um, at Goodwill. Yeah, and you, uh, you're you not a native Kansas City, correct? I am not a native of Kansas <laughs> City. I'm taking it on right now, but I'm not a, na a native. Where, where are you from originally? My original home country is Jamaica. Um, oh, wow. And I came to the United States um, as a teenager to attend college and just kind of transitioned into um, different work roles. And I'm enjoying my time here. I still get the opportunity to go back and enjoy the island. And I still have family there. Wow. I'd love to go there at some point. Uh, any Anytime you get to go to an island, uh, especially in the wintertime here, it's good. Have you adjusted? Oh, yeah. Now that we're in the 100 degree days, have you adjusted? I know you lived in the South for a little bit as well, looking at your LinkedIn and Georgia and Florida and uh, Tennessee, mm -hmm. um, all great places. Have you adjusted to the changes in climate here? <laughs> um, I am working on it. <laughs> I'm not fully there yet, <laughs> um, but I'm working on it. The, the winters get a little bit rough, but um, I'm still enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about, and we'll get into this more into the show, Keisha Gracious is with us. She is the director of the retail services at uh, Mocan Goodwill. Again, the website is mocangoodwill.org. Um, how many retail centers do you have? Uh, donation centers here in the in the in the Mocan region. 
Well, we have 13 store locations and all our stores accept donations. We also have an attended donation center that we refer to as an ADC, which is generally a standalone um, sh storefront um, location that's not affiliated with a store and they just receive donations there. We have one um, of those locations. We also receive donation at our home office um, on uh, 18th Street um, and Campbell in that area there. And then uh, a, to a smaller scale, we receive donations at our outlet center. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna talk about kind of uh, what you do each and every day, but really kind of break down on the show today um, there was an NPR article about uh, about kind of what the donations look like and everything happening as far as um, what people are showing up with and kind of the added costs sometimes that go along with that. I mean, if somebody brings, uh, you know, things that can't be recycled, for instance, or goods that are broken and just kind of what that means, what you can and can't bring to a Goodwill donation center, what you need more of, maybe what you need less of. I mean, we're really going to break that down on the show and kind of really kind of break down too how all of these donations that people make throughout the year kind of help you with your overall mission at Goodwill. So right. um, there's just a lot of things. And and for your for your job, I mean, you're just juggling a lot of balls, aren't you? I mean, I can't imagine um, kind of overseeing all of these different centers. It's got to be a lot. It is quite a bit. It's very enjoyable, though. Uh, there's never a dull day. There's never a day that's repeated either. Um, so it's it's really enjoyable. Um, challenging at times uh, because, you, like you said, you have to juggle quite a few pieces um, at the same time. Um, but we're serving our community, and it, it's, it's quite um, fulfilling to know that at the end of the day, we have made life better for someone in our community. Very well said. Very excited about today's show. Uh, Keisha Gracious is joining us. Goodwill, Director of Retail Services. Again, their website is mocangoodwill.org. Um, before we go to break, too, I want to say that you can connect with the show uh, on Twitter. I'm at Jason Grill and at Grill Nation Show. Also available on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Jason Grill. You also can listen to all of our shows. They're all online. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and KMBZ 980 AM. We also, obviously, we're, if you're watching us on the live stream now, you can also watch us after the show. We have all of our sneak peeks, all of our full shows available on YouTube. Just search for The Grill Nation Show with Jason Grill. I am very excited about today's show. We're going to learn so much more about what Goodwill does each and every day at their donation centers and how you can help them and really truthfully talk more about each and everything that they do to help out uh, members of our community, all the exciting things going on over there and how the donation centers really help fuel that on today's Grill Nation show with Jason Grill. Thanks for joining us today. We will be right back after the break. You're listening to the Grill Nation show on 980 AM KMBZ. Okay, we're still rolling here on video. Now, we're going to have an 11 minute and 40 second segment here, Keisha, coming up. So okay. this will be a longer one. So um, let's break down and get really kind of into a deep dive about a lot of the, uh, the items and the issues that, uh, that, that you face. As soon as he gives us the heads up, we'll begin rolling again. But okay. uh, um, yeah, it's great to have you in Kansas City. You've only been here now for what, I guess, what, four or five years? About four years, almost four years, my entire, um, I came here to work with Goodwill. So um, I moved here a week before I started working. Wow. Um, with them. So almost four well, years. You were coming from Knoxville, Tennessee, correct? Home of the uh, Tennessee Vols. Right. <laughs> I've been there before, a few times, actually. Yep. It's a bigger city than I thought, Knoxville. You know, it you is. Um, they bleed orange there. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they do. Okay, we are ready to roll here in, hold on one second, uh, in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Grill Nation show with Jason Grill. I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, if you're listening on the radio on 980 AM KMBZ, 
on podcast networks or on our website, grillnationshow.com. Also appreciate all of the folks who are currently watching us on a live stream. I really enjoy doing this uh, via the technology that we have now. And uh, while I do miss being in the studio with, with our guests from time to time, uh, this is a very good platform and it allows us to kind of put this all on social media for those who want to watch it live. So really appreciate those who are watching it live. Uh, Keisha Gracious is our guest. She is the Director of Retail Services at uh, Goodwill, mocangoodwill.org is the website. Just an amazing operation here in our region. Uh, you know, and again, mocangoodwill.org. Keisha, um, take us through kind of an overview of a, a Goodwill Donation Center. Um, if I'm going into one of these places, what should I expect? So one, expect maybe there are others ahead of you. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Um, our community is extremely generous to us. So um, there's constant traffic going through our donation centers. Um, but when you come in, you can expect someone to greet you. Um, you can unload your items. They're also um, able to assist you in unloading your items. And then uh, there are people who um, would like a receipt. Some people don't want a receipt. The, the interaction with the donor um, can be very brief. Greet you, hi, how are you? Take your donation, um, offer you a receipt, thank you for supporting our mission, and then you're on your way. So it's a really quick process. But beyond that, our donation center attendant now separates the donation into soft goods and hard goods. And this just prepares it so that we can channel the donation specifically to someone who is gonna work through the items. So there are different stations on the inside of our building that we work through uh, soft goods, clothing items, linen, bedding, all that. And then there are the household items that are more the hard good items. Um, there's a different station that works through that because we prepare them differently um, and make them ready for the sales floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to have quite an interesting operation too with with all these goods and people loading them and unloading them. And you know, if I just drop off some clothes, it's different than if I drop off uh, something uh, that's a lot heavier, right? So I mean, there's right. all kinds of issues. Um, you know, what what are the basic types of items you accept? You kind of kind of walk through that a little bit, but let's kind of get more uh, in depth on that. Yeah, we gladly accept gently used items, so household items clothing items, purses, shoes, um, bed linen, bathroom linen. We, we accept those items on the household wares items. We accept anything from small appliances, kitchen items, decor items, you know, wall decor, table decor. Um, we accept furniture items. Um, we, uh, we accept um, monetary donations, believe it or not. Sometimes some people drive through and they have a bucket of change and they just leave it with us. Um, so any most household items we do accept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I didn't know that. Truthfully, um, before I started engaging and, and talking to more folks at Goodwill, I mean, you all accept a lot of different things. Now, We'll get into kind of some of the issues around that in the next segment, but what are um, some of the items maybe you do not accept? Um, what types of items do you not accept to your Goodwill donation centers? Because to me, you know, you accept a lot. So there's got to yes. be a few things maybe that you do not accept. Yeah, there are some things that we don't accept. Um, large appliances, refrigerators, washer, dryers, those kind of items. Um, large exercise equipment. It's just too much for us to handle and move around. Um, automobile items, you know, people may bring tires in, something like that we're not able to accept. Construction items, you know, tiles, drywalls, paint, those kind of things. Mattresses and box springs is something that we get asked a lot about, but we do not accept those items. Baby gears, high chairs, strollers, car seats, those kind of things, hazardous chemicals. We are not able to accept those. Yeah. Um, wired electrical items, for instance, a chandelier, 
um, it's it's so easy, like, oh, let me bring this to Goodwill, but we're not accepting those either. Um, medical equipment, walkers, things of that nature, and televisions is a huge one also that we um, get offered a lot, but we're not able to take televisions. And one that I must mention, weapons. We're not able to take weapons either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some of those, I think you said, like, I think a lot of people who maybe don't know uh, kind of all the rules, it's one of them to have you on the show to talk about this. You would think, um, you know, they would they would assume that they could just drop off a goodwill that somebody would have a use for, like, a right. uh, mattress, you know, or, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe not the chandeliers, but, like, you know, some basic home goods that people definitely need and, and, and really need in our society. But for those are just larger items that become kind of an issue maybe for your operations and for managing all those things. I mean, I can't imagine the TVs that, uh, how old some of them are maybe that have, right. have found their way into uh, the front <laughs> of the will before, right? I mean, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, and I guess the mattress is just because of the size of those. Um, items that we're not able to resell, uh, we work to not take them. Um, so if we're not able to resell it, then it becomes our responsibility to di dispose of it. And that's where sometimes there are these hidden costs that donors don't really see. But at the end of the day, we're needing to dispose of it and be um, good stewards of our environment. And so it now adds a cost to us to get rid of some of these items. So if we're not able to sell it in our store, we work at not taking it. Mm -hmm. You guys are appreciative of all donations for the most part. Um, talk to us about kind of how important it is on a daily basis for these donations to be made. Oh, we source our sales floor, whether it be in our stores, at the outlet, we source it from donations. Our donations are critical to us. We really appreciate our donors. They have been generous in bringing us their items. Um, without our donations, we're not able to have our sales floor. So it becomes really important for us to continue to have a steady flow of donation through our buildings. Keisha Gracious is our guest today. She's a, uh, the Director of Retail Services at Goodwill. Their website is mocangoodwill.org. Um, yeah, you mentioned that. Now, again, let's go through the region again. You, you, you have many, many locations throughout the region. I'm assuming you're on Kansas and Missouri side and kind of all yes. throughout the area. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are in communities like St. Joseph. We're in North Kansas City, Blue Springs, Lee Summit, um, on the Missouri side, Liberty. And then we have stores on the Kansas side. We're as far as Manhattan, Topeka, Lawrence, Pittsburgh, we're in Leavenworth, mm -hmm. we're in the Shawnee Mission area, Overland Park, um, just a wide, you know, coverage um, of the Western Missouri, Eastern Kansas footprint. So that's our region right there. Yeah, I don't think people really realize how huge this region really is. I mean, when we talk about other parts of Missouri, you know, there's one obviously on the St. Louis side, but you guys kind of are representing a ton of a ton of western missouri and, and a whole heck of a lot of eastern kansas there's a lot of geography you got to get through here yes um and we are in the process of expanding even into more communities in our missouri and kansas area but it is a large footprint and it just means we're serving more people in our communities mm -hmm. you guys have a uh, a lot of missions uh that you work on to with work and with value and, and, and really kind of helping people, these donations essentially drive the mission because uh, from what I understand, doing my research and talking to others at your organization, I mean, most of your services are provided to the client or the, the consumer, I guess you would say, that you help with at no cost, correct? At no cost and funded primarily from the revenue driven through our retail stores. So that's how the donation ties through to the mission is that we're not able to perform that mission if we're not um, able to have the products flowing through our stores. So whatever a customer purchases or a donor gives to us, it really helps to really fund our mission and get us out in the community and serve these um, uh, clients at no cost because 
frankly, there are many of them who are not able to afford some kind of services and we're providing it to them, making sure that we are building our workforce around Kansas City. That's our focus, workforce development. Mm -hmm. It's a great focus and something that obviously is in, in very high demand right now uh, with, with a lot of job openings and we need to make sure we, we fill these. Um, we have about a minute left in this segment. Do you have one or maybe one success story that you can point to uh, through the work of Goodwill and kind of the donation centers that you can, that you like to hang your hat on, Keisha? I'm sure there's thousands, but. Oh yeah, there are so many of them, but I just want to highlight one last um Christmas, during, through our holiday of giving campaign, we were able to gift a single parent the opportunity to shop for herself and her children in our store. It made such an impact on her. It had such an impact in the community that we decided to open it up and gift to more people in and ar around the areas of our store. So we handed out several gift cards to people within those communities to be able to come into our stores and shop and just give the gift of warmth and um, contentment for the holiday. Mm -hmm. You know, people who would not all, um, otherwise have the opportunity to make these purchases, we had the opportunity to give that to them. Yeah, it's a beautiful story and uh, many more of those to come here on the Grill Nation show. Thanks for joining us today. We will be right back after the break. Okay, we've got two segments down. We're going to tape our third one here. Um, it's another long one, Keisha, okay? Yeah, that's good. Great job on your last segment. Okay, that's thank you. Hear all these stories, you know, and We'll start, we'll start with the NPR article on the next one. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, I'll do a call for action as well at some point here. Okay. Um, okay. My producer also said that he, uh, he lived in Knoxville for seven years. Oh, really? He was, uh, he was sharing on our, on, our, on our chat some pizza places that he enjoyed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big Ed's Pizza in Oak Ridge. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm familiar with Oak Ridge. Yeah. Okay. So in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Grill Nation show with Jason Grill here on 980 AM KMBZ on the radio, on podcast networks such as Apple, Spotify, Google Play, Google Podcasts, and on Stitcher as well as at our website, which is grillnationshow.com, where you can find links to all of our shows, supporters, guests, uh, and more information about the show at grillnationshow.com. Uh, if you'd love to, we'd love to have you on the show. If you could uh, send an email to grillnationshow at gmail.com, I'd love to collaborate, partner, or have you on as a guest here on the show. We also love to hear from you and appreciate all of the positive feedback and uh, constructive criticism too. We'll take that as well. So anyways, Keisha Gracious is with us from Mocan Goodwill. Their website is mocangoodwill.org. She is the Director of Resale, Retail Services at Goodwill. Uh, Keisha, we've, uh, we've been talking a lot about donations, but I just wanted to give a call to action, a plug before we get into our next, uh, next uh, topics about kind of all the people listening to the show. I mean, there's so many people right now that um, just have so many clothing goods, so many home goods, essentially smaller ones that maybe they're they're moving off, moving. Maybe they uh, their kids are growing out of their clothing. You know, the summer's here. I know spring and summer are big times for people to clean their closets mm -hmm. out, especially too winter too. I guess before the end of the year, but it's a kind of a call to action. If you if you have goods, just go see Keisha and, and Goodwill. Like go to these donation centers because they need you right now. Um, and then also too, Keisha. Uh, I wanted to kind of take that into this NPR article that uh, that I read, and it's very recent. It was called uh, "Goodwill Doesn't Want Your Broken Toaster." So that was the name of the article on NPR. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that article and like kind of what we were talking about before. Like when someone does drop off a product that you cannot use, what does that mean to you? I mean, there's so many other additional costs that go go with that. There's additional cost that goes with it. And so when we really appreciate all the items that our donors, donors bring to us, many people donate 
because they're think they there's still value that they see in the item that they bring in. There are times when we receive donations that we are not able to place on our sales floor. We're not able to um, sell it in our outlet. And so there are times when we we must divert some of these items um, to trash. Um, there are we divert 17 million pounds of um, items from the landfill every every year. But there are just a few things that we get that we're not able to do much with it in terms of satisfying a sale in our store. And so um, there are times when um, our bill could grow a little bit. And so we want to um, make sure that people understand that we do appreciate the donations that you bring. Um, but if the item is broken, if the item does not work, um, then we want to kind of, um, I guess, encourage that whatever you bring us are items that we can use. So if it's broken, if it mm -hmm. can't be resold, then we would rather um, we would rather not ac not have it um, donated. Yeah, because I mean the trash bill alone, uh, and I know you guys try to recycle uh, what you can't sell, but from the article, I mean they were having over a million dollar trash bill for this Goodwill. Uh, and I think it was somewhere on the East Coast. And, you know, just trying to recycle the items that can't be used is is tough. I mean, it's it's fascinating that it's just you don't really think about, at least somebody like myself or a layman who doesn't work in your field, just about all the additional, like, uh, costs that could be associated with items that that aren't used and how that really affects the mission of Goodwill because then you aren't able to essentially help as many people as you as you want to to build workforce development and communities and sustainability. Yes. Once the item becomes a cost to us to dispose of, then it means that we are taking away some of the money that we could use to really fund our mission. Mm -hmm. So the more and more items that we have to dispose of in instead of selling it in our sales, in our um, stores or online or wherever, um, it it means that there is a growing cost to us to dispose of them. So there's been an explosion of thrift shop shopping across all demographics. Why, why do you think that is? Uh, and why has this happened? So there is a wave of repurposing across all demographic right now in America. And the concept of sustainability and being more environmentally responsible is driving thrift right now. And the shopping um, have gone up because of this. Also, um, the idea of getting that cute little dress um, for a fraction of the price that you, norm you would normally pay for it, um, that's appealing to anyone in, in any demographic. So uh, people are working to be more um, sustainable. Um, and so that is driving versus um, buying additional items from other stores, they would rather thrift um, and make sure that they are helping to be sustainable um, and, and helping the environment. I love that. I love that. Um, now, do you guys do at Goodwill, Keisha Gracious is our guest director of retail services at uh, Mocan Goodwill. Do you do um, uh, e-commerce e e thrifting or is it retail only? And what are the differences for those listening? Yes, we do e also um, go into uh, e-commerce thrifting. So the majority of the items that we get are placed on our sales floor. So the majority of the items we sell, that's sold inside of our store. Um, while working through those items, there are times when you come across just this unusual um, item with more value that we like to channel to our e-commerce platform. Because if you offer it to a wider variety of shoppers, then you can um, gain more for that item. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how we channel things to our e-commerce. You don't find as many things there as on our sales floor, but you do find some items there that are of higher value, are just unique, our collectibles. And so um, offering it just to a wider market helps us gain more for that item. We work to 
maximize the value of every donation that we get. And so that sometimes means channeling some things to our e-commerce platform. Yeah, I was curious about that. that I, I didn't think of it like that. That is very smart for you all to do that um, because you will get some like some diamonds in the rough probably that somebody, you know, I mean, I'm not a, I don't know, but you know, all these different things would, would be worth, but um, that is fascinating. That's, that's how you use the e-commerce. And when you price these items out, what's that process look like? On the e-commerce side or on the store like side? If I dropped off, you know, a, a suit that I had only worn once or twice or a, you know, a, a dress shirt or something. I mean, you gotta, you gotta price all these things out to, to sell them, which I think is just fascinating because when I donate clothing or goods, you know, when you're, you're, uh, you're, you're getting a tax receipt, you're always like, you know, what is this shirt worth? What is this shirt worth? What is this hat worth? I've never worn. I mean, it's like, it's interesting just kind of the dynamics of, of the pricing and whatnot in order to maintain the value and also, you know, be able to provide for your mission when you guys are pricing these products out. Yeah. So most of the products and you referred to clothing, mm -hmm. uh, most of those items have a set price that they go for in our store. So, you know, a row of men's shirts or row of women's shirts, they have a set price in our store. Outside of that, we sometimes get some items that are, again, higher value. And so there's a guideline to which our um, the producers in the back, the people who prepare the items, have a guideline of, okay, based on certain things, then they're able to give it um, a little higher price to place it on the sales floor. But for the overwhelming majority of the things that we produce and put to the sales floor, um, there's just one price that gen that's on the top of the, um, the racks. And so that refers to all items in that area. Forgot to ask you, like, what about sports equipment and whatnot? Like if you're if you have a, like a tennis racket or a golf club or a, a a kid's baseball glove, is that is that not donatable or is that donable? Oh yeah, we we take those. They are donatable, and we've had signed um, baseballs before that we have channeled to our e-commerce platform <laughs> and have had it sold. So yeah, bring along your sports equipment. They do sell, and um, yeah, sometimes bring in some real good value for us. That's good to know. Keisha uh, Gracious is with us. Um, do you have a loyalty program or a customer program that uh, that that Moke and Goodwill uh, implements? Yes, we are very new in our loyalty program. This program, um, you can sign up for it in the store. You can go to our website at mokangoodwill.org and click on Thrift Love. Um, you can sign up and uh, you gain a one point for every dollar that is spent in our stores and that those dollars are pre-taxed. I must say that. Um, and you just um, accumulate your points. You can get $5 off for every 50 points that you've accumulated. Um, it's currently going on. Um, it's new to us and our customers are enjoying it. Um, they're signing up in, in hundreds um, and they're redeeming those points. We have loyal shoppers who come through our stores every week, and this is a way for them to shop and get rewarded for it. That's awesome. I'm glad you guys are doing that. That's really cool. Um, and then lastly, on this segment, before we go to break, um, what were the donations like during the recent pandemic? Did you see an increase in donations with people at home or was there, was there a decrease because people weren't dropping off their clothing or their goods? What was that like? Oh, there was definitely an increase. You know, Americans found themselves with the rare opportunity to be home for a long period of time. And so some of those projects that were um, being put off for a while, they were able to do it. And they were cleaning out closets. They were redecorating their homes, reorganizing. And so some of these items that they decide not to hold on to anymore um, they came to us. And so we had, especially when we reopened right after the first closure um, at the first part of the pandemic, um, we had long lines of donations. Donations definitely went up. And again, we were so appreciative of that. That's great to hear. Keisha Gracious is with us, Director of Retail Services at uh, Mocan Goodwill. Their website is mocangoodwill.org. We'll be right back for our final segment of the Grill Nation Show. Thanks for listening today to the Grill Nation Show with Jason Grill. Okay. 
one segment left. Great job. Uh, the information is wonderful. I'm I'm learning a lot listening to you and all these uh, um, things I didn't even know, which is fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. A lot of people don't know all it takes to to do all this stuff um, at Goodwill. They just see it, the donation dropped off and then they get to shop for it on the other side. But there's just a whole lot of things that go through in the, in between those two places. We're going to um, we're going to start there uh, in our final segment with kind of some of the bigger challenges and opportunities you have. Uh, this will be a nine minute segment. So you're aware that it will be a quicker one. Okay. And, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to know that I, I really need to just go through everything I have and just, I won't bring any, anything you have to throw away, Keisha, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're ready to rock here in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Grill Nation show with Jason Grill. I really have enjoyed today's show with Keisha Gracious. She's from uh, Goodwill. She's the Director of Retail Services at Mocan Goodwill. Their website is mocangoodwill.org. Uh, we're on our best, best for last segment. Uh, Keisha, what are some of the, the, the challenges maybe that you face or the biggest challenge you face uh, with your job and with Goodwill uh, as far as the, the retail donation centers? Um, for the donation center, well, right now, our biggest challenge is staffing. Um, as many people or many organizations around the country are experiencing right now, um, that's our greatest challenge right now. So we are still um, serving our donors. We are still serving our customers in our stores. Um, we're finding creative ways to do it. Um, but that's our our greatest challenge right now. It, it's is staffing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and hopefully that'll figure itself out here moving forward. Um, on the flip side, what is uh, what are some of your biggest opportunities you believe going forward? Oh, definitely putting more stores into areas that we are not currently operating. Um, we are it, we have planned to open uh, two to three stores each year and I'm excited about that because that allows us to serve communities that we're not currently serving. Because you know that is when we go inside of a community and we place a store, it's not just to sell items there or to collect donations, but it's also to get inside of the community and find out how we can best serve that community. Our mission staff comes in with the retail staff and their job is just to find out what areas are of need are there in those communities and how can we help to serve those. Yeah, that's that really is all about the mission and kind of what you do with all of these donations and how right. they fuel uh, the community. And, and the more communities you guys can be in, the better, in my opinion. Um, Keisha Gracious, uh, let's get to this. This is a fun question. What was the favorite item or donated item that you've ever received? Um, in one of your stores. I mean, this doesn't have to be like the one that went for the most money uh, on the e-commerce <laughs> side that was uh, a collectible, but what would you consider your favorite item that has been donated? Yeah, we've had a signed baseball that was on our website there for a while. Um, it was exciting. So I'm trying to learn baseball, but the people around me who are baseball fans were very excited about this item that we got donated. We also had a collection of guitars, um, and that was on our e-commerce website. That was um, quite exciting to have that. It You never know what's going to come through on a daily basis. And so you come up on some things, sometimes you're like, wow. You know, you're just in awe that someone decided to trust us with this item and bring it to us so that we can um, turn it around and use it to, to serve people and to um, help fund our mission. So there've been some great items, some collectibles, paintings. Um, man, the list could go on. That's awesome. I'm sure Ed would uh, would love more of those. I'll, uh, I'll have to like try to find some uh, autograph stuff for you guys at some point and maybe drop some stuff off. That'd be fun. Right. Um, 
Yeah, it always goes to like the celebrity autographed athlete uh, autographs. They always they always seem to collect the most. So that's really cool. Hey, if I'm a, if I'm a person out there listening or someone in the community that has that wants to donate a large amount of clothing or goods, like, do you have any best advice for them if they're if they're really like I'm I'm I'm, I'm moving or I'm going to downsize and I have all this great material and I really want to give it to people that need it. Um, what would your be your best advice for those who have an abundance of, of, of donations? So the, the best advice I would have for that donor is to contact our home office directly. Um, there's so much that could go into preparing for a large donation that if we coordinate it well, we could tell them the location to take it to. We could say the time of day to take that location. We will be at that time prepared to receive that donation. And when I say prepared, we'll have additional staff there um, to accept that we'll be able to um, work out space in our back room that we can place that donation. We'll also decide, okay, is it all going to be at that location or do we um, divide it out and give it to other locations? So the best advice would be contact our home office directly. And then we will coordinate that on the back end to make sure that we receive their donations. Hey, Keisha, I lost you there for just a second. If you could, uh, we'll edit that out of the, the radio show, but just for, just go through that answer again, if you could. Uh, best advice for those wanting to donate a large item of clothing or goods. Okay, so the best advice I would have is that they contact our home office directly. Once that is done, we can now coordinate on the back end how to receive that donation. What store do we send it to? How do we provide additional staffing to make sure that we can receive that donation and also prepare a space in our back room that we can place the donation when we get it so we can handle it with the most respect um, that the donor um, trusts us with, with these items. So contacting our home office directly would be the best way to go for a large donation. It's great to hear. And I um, I do have a question here that, I, that I'm kind of interested to know about. If you could have one item uh, in your stores, what would it be and why? If you could have more of it, if you could wave a magic wand, Keisha Gracious, Director of Retail Services at Goodwill, um, where I could have a truckload of these things, what would they be and why? That would be more gently used or new furniture. We turn so much furniture in our stores each day. And if we get a good donation of furniture in our in our donation door, it takes no time for it to sell on our sales floor. So if we could have more of just gently used furniture or new furniture in our um in our space, that would really help us a lot. Fascinating. I, uh, if, if I was a, a betting man, I would, I would not have predicted that. That's, that's interesting. I love that answer. Uh, very good to know for those listening as well. What has been your proudest moment at Goodwill? You've been there now for over around four years. Uh, do you have a moment that you really made you excited to be a member of the team at Goodwill? Tons of them, but right now I am living my proudest moment where the retail division is doing well. We are, um, growing, we are seeing increased in sales year over year. And so we are now just trying to channel all our efforts into growing even more. Um, so I'm living my proudest moment right now, leading the team. And just to see how much they put out on a daily basis, just to know that we are serving the mission. We're doing good for our community. So along with so many others, um, other moments, this would be, I think, my proudest moment. Wow, that's that's always good to know that you're going into that. And then um, obviously you're very excited about uh, moving forward with the retail operations because you stated earlier that you're excited for more locations to, to come about, for more communities to be served. And of course, obviously for more goods and staff to, to come in. Yes, we are super excited about these new locations that we have planned for later this year and each year leading up to us meeting our goal of opening a certain amount of stores. So two to three stores each year, we're super excited about that. It gives us the opportunity 
like I said, to grow and to just have a wider footprint in the in the Mocan Goodwill area. Super excited. That is awesome. Final question for you. Um, what is your favorite thing about Kansas City? I know you've been here now four years. So what, what has it been so far? So along with or aside from the great barbecue that's in Kansas City, um, I really love the outdoor markets and events that happen each year um, or during the summer months, mostly because the other uh, months are so cold. But um, I really enjoy the outdoor markets and the outdoor events. Um, there's just a strong sense of community in the Kansas City area, just a warm, welcoming city great city for a family and I'm really enjoying it. I, I'm, I wasn't sure what I was looking for. Um, but honestly, I'm satisfied with just the, the atmosphere and the community. Well said. I'm very excited about that. We need to get more Keisha gracious to move to Kansas city. Um, Keisha, thank you so much for coming on the show. The website again is mocangoodwill.org. I put it up on the screen for those watching. Um, you guys do such amazing work here in our region. I'm so excited to learn more about uh, and hopefully uh, donate more products to you all now that I know what I can and can't drop off. But th what you do for Kansas City and our region is ex 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 very exceptional. And I think it's going to continue to get even better and better with your leadership, and your board and your team there. So I'm very excited about that. Thank you so much for coming on the show this week and for all that you do for our community. Thank you so much for having me. And check us out at shopgoodwill.com. That's where um, our e-commerce platform is. Shop Goodwill. What was it? Shopgoodwill.com. Shopgoodwill.com. Shopgoodwill.com if you want to find all those baseballs that are autographed and those uh, <laughs> really cool items too. Shopgoodwill.com. Thanks for joining us on today's Grill Nation show. We will see you again next week. Take care and have a good one. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do our sneak peek now, which we'll tape and we'll post on social media. Great job this week on the show. Thank you very much, Keisha. Thank you. That was awesome. Um, for, our, for our sneak peek segment, um, I, was, I really liked your answer about the um, what's the one more item you could have in your stores. Okay. So, and then if you could maybe just um, – We'll just we'll just do that, and then I'll, I'll I'll maybe I'll ask you real briefly about your biggest challenge, and, and maybe that'll help to uh, to spur some eyeballs as well. And you said the website is shopgoodwill.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So this will be two minutes and fifteen seconds. So it'll be very brief. Okay. Okay. In three. Hold on a second. Three, two, one. Hi, everybody. It's Jason Grill with the Grill Nation Show. Thanks for joining us for this one question sneak peek with Keisha Gracious. She is the Director of Retail Services for Mocan Goodwill. Their website is mocangoodwill.org. But more importantly, the website to shop online is shopgoodwill.com. Keisha, one question for our sneak peek. If you could have more of uh, one item in your store is anything you could have. We could make, wave a magic wand and we could have all the donation centers having this item. What would it be and why? So that one item would be more sellable furniture. And what that means is that it's gently used or new furniture. We sell a large amount of donation um, furniture in our stores. And so more of that will just help us to fund our mission a little more. Uh, gently used, correct? Yes. Okay. So, so the furniture is very needed at our donation centers. You have so many donation centers throughout our region. Uh, we are going to talk about every, from everything of what you get the most of, what you need more of again, uh, what you accept, what you don't accept, how this fuels the mission of Goodwill and helps to uh, create a, a more sustainable workforce in our region and better people's lives. We're going to break down everything on this week's Grill Nation show. I'm very excited about it. We're going to learn about your proudest moment, how you came to Kansas City, uh, just so many fascinating things. We're going to break down an NPR article about, um, you know, if you bring a broken toaster to Goodwill, what does that mean for the trash and the recyclables and 
it, it's just really going to be a fascinating show and really kind of a look behind the curtain of what your donation centers uh, do and, you know, how they kind of help everyone in our region. So we're very excited to have Keisha Gracious on the Grill Nation show this week, the Director of Retail Services at Goodwill. Thanks for joining us on this One Question Grill Nation show sneak peek. We'll see you soon. Thanks for listening and watching. Thank you. Okay. Was that was that good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> One second here.